In this short tutorial, I will be showing you how to run a video within your GTX project. In this case, I'm using an example. If you load in up a program and the first thing you see is a video, as many AAA programs do, they have some short video running whilst behind the scenes are loading assets in. So let me just show you what we're going to end up with. Let's move on to how we got there. For this project, we're going to be using the GDX-video repository under the libgdx repository in GitHub. Um, there's three pieces of information we need to grab from here to add to our Android Studio project. First is the latest build number. In this case, we're going to be using Snapshot, so we'll be using 1.3.2-snapshot. And we also need to add a couple of lines to our build cradle in Android Studio. So we're going to be grabbing this line here for core and this one for desktop. And with any uh, code that you take from GitHub, you, know, you should always just check the license and make sure you're allowed to use it freely. Of course, this is under the libgdx uh, license, which is Apache 2. So we're free to use this code in any way we want to. Before we start, I'll just run through how the project is set up in Android Studio. So if you want to follow along, you can set your project up exactly the same. So I ran the libgdx setup program and just clicked on the desktop option. So I deselected Android, iOS, and HTML. And it basically set up for me two classes. One is the desktop launcher, which we have here. I added one line just to set the size I wanted for the demo, a window size. And then the main class, which it always sets up um, with application adapter, where it extends it. I basically removed the code where it shows the logo and the red screen and just took those out. So we've got a, a nice clean project to start off with. And then we're going to be using one asset. Um, this is actually the video file we're going to be displaying. Now, um, with uh, the video rendering, rendering program we're going to be using, I could only get it to work with the WebM format, um, which is common across all computers. So you shouldn't have any issues. And what I basically did was I took an MP4 uh, video I'd made and uh, used an online, free online web converter and converted to Web. M. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is add that uh, GDX video uh, extension to our project, and we are going to do that by changing our build cradle. So just to be clear which one it is, uh, let me close these up. And it's basically the main build cradle here, so not within desktop or core, but this one here. And we're going to add three lines to it. So first of all, we're going to follow the format that uses um, is used uh, by libgdx. And we're going to add a, a version number here, which, um, as I said before, was uh, the 1.3.2 snapshot. Then next, we will add the two other lines which, which we need for dependencies. So first one under desktop, and the next one under core. All right, and when you do that, as you'll see, it will come up asking you to sync, and it will basically download those and add them to your project. So let's do that now. And you can see it's downloading items here. And when that's finished, you can see it's added uh, some lines in our external library. And when that's finished, as you can see, it's added these to our external libraries. So we are ready to go. Now that we have downloaded the dependencies we need, we can go into our project and I will show you the simple lines of code that we need to add. So I've already added the lines of code and I'm just going to run through them for you. There's not that many. The first thing we need to do is um, in our core project under the class that's set up automatic by libgdx, we obviously need to add a uh, reference to the video player we're going to be using. And then in the create method, we initialize it by basically setting video player to video player creator dot create video player. And the one thing we want need to do is add a listener. And the reason we're going to do that is we would like to know when this video has stopped playing. 
um, and then you can uh, do something else after that. So we set the listener. In this case, we don't actually have anything happening. That would go in here. So let's just put do something. And then we need to load in the file we're going to be playing. So we set that by using video player dot player, and I'm pointing to the video that I have here under assets desktop. And we should put a try catch around that in case for some reason it can't play the video and uh, we won't crash out for our program. So that's in the create method. And then in the render method, there's uh, basically three lines you need to add or four lines. So the first one is you need to update, uh, video play update, And this basically moves it on to the next frame. And then under or within your batch begin batch end uh, routine, we first of all we need to get the texture of the frame. So basically, what vi the video player is doing is, as it moves to the next uh, image uh, that would be displayed in the video, it actually grabs that as a texture, and then we are going to be showing that as a texture on our screen. And to the viewer, it looks like the video is play playing. So this line basically gets the next texture. We just check that it's not null for some reason, and then we draw it and batch end. And that's all you need to do. Um, and when we play that, um, you will see your video. So let's just do that now, make sure it's all working OK. I hope you found that useful. Um, let me know if you've got any comments in the section below, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.